हेलो प्रणति हेलो यस मैम व्हाट हैपेन ओनली यू आर देयर आह मैम दिस इज सेम थ्री राइट सेम थ्री यार यस आह यूजी फर्स्ट ईयर से सपोज यूजी सेकंड ईयर मैम सेमेस्टर थ्री नो नो आह आह आई हैव टू टेक सेमेस्टर वन आई नीड टू टेक सेमेस्टर थ्री वी बोथ आर व्हाट डू कॉल इट टाउन guest faculty only oh, i thought you are a student i'm so sorry no 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 not at all ma'am but i'm like this is sem 3 no that's what i'm saying but then uh, i don't know why only us both are there or is it that we got logged into a wrong um, i'll just uh, check ma'am huh? well, please i'll just check i'll yeah. leave and see thank you okay ma'am anyway good evening everyone let me start with my uh, topic so yeah like you know till last year you know uh, and in the last class we had seen about wildlife and uh, how uh, you know animals of the forest birds and uh, like you know different kinds of fishes the plants and the microorganisms that are involved that are present what exactly are the wildlife um, uh, forests and uh, what are the different kinds of uh, natural parks and the sanctuaries that are present and then you know and how are we supposed to uh, preserve or protect our wildlife and the biodiversity and what exactly is biodiversity so which is, which is basically life forms on the earth that is all prokaryotes eukaryotes including the plants animals and the microorganisms different kinds of cultivated and wild uh, plants and animals and how we are going to preserve them and how we are going to live along so that you know there is preservation because human impact is damaging the biodiversity so and again that what are the different kinds of hot spots that are present in by uh, like you know or you know biodiversity rich areas in india we have four hot spots that is the himalayan the indo burman and the sundarlands and the western ghats of sri lanka and uh, we also have seen what exactly is the iucn international union for conservation of nature and the world wildlife uh, like you know federation it is trying to help preserve uh, the biodiversity this time we are going to see or in this class we are going to see about zoo geographical rames in zoo geographical rames again we are going to see let me share my screen with you how animals have come to the different areas or how they have been habitated in different areas so i will share my screen with you and 
So, so you have something called as a zoo geographical uh, regions. So I will just like share my screen with you so that you get to see it. Right. So in this case scenario, we are going to see what exactly are the zoo geographic factors and the factors that are going to distribute the animals accordingly. So this is the uh, branch of biology which is concerned with distribution of animals that includes both vertebrates and invertebrates. And this is at three levels, that is geographical, regional and local. So once you come to this, you, you get to see that there are two scientists, uh, Philip Slater and Alfred Wallace. Uh, who had identified the different kinds of regions in the world today. So the animals are distributed mostly in these six uh, regions only. So the first one is Palearctic region. This is again divided into, uh, you have uh, Euro-Siberian Mediterranean basin. So this is the whole zoo geographical region and the different kinds of characteristics of the animals. So when you come to the Palearctic region, it is, uh, this has uh, the Euro-Siberian region, then Mediterranean, Sahara, Arabian Desert, Western and uh, then East Asian and freshwater regions. In this, again, it is bound by the sea, the West, East, South and the North, by the Himalayas and the, uh, like, you know, uh, by the Sahara and the Himalayas to the South, respectively. Again, temperate regions. And then you have uh, around 135 families of terrestrial vertebrates. Uh, and uh, then you have uh, different kinds of uh, flora and fauna that is present. Again, this is the, uh, subdivided into European, Mediterranean, Siberian and Manchurian region according to the uh, like, you know, uh, area or the coldness in that particular area. So you have different kinds of uh, mammals that are present, fish, amphibia, reptiles. You can get to see them on the uh, screen, in fact, giant Asian salamander. When it comes to the fish, you have the carps, uh, sicklebacks, so like, you know, freshwater fish. Amphibians include the European salamanders. You have the bufo, ricophorus. Reptiles include the different kinds of lizards. And the birds include the, uh, like, you know, uh, arctic terns, gold crests, finches. Mammals are around 39 uh, families. Moles, beavers, porcupines, etc. So all of these make the, uh, uh, the Palearctic region animals. When it comes to the Nearctic region animals, this is about the North America. You can just see that. Usually, it's about all about the North American regions over here. So, different kinds of uh, uh, similarity is there with the Palearctic region. So, different kinds of fishes are also present. So, you have, uh, again, it is divided into Californian, Rocky Mountain, Allegheny, and the Canadian subregions. Um, also, you have the different kinds of animals and reptiles. Uh, so this is around uh, amphibians include the salamanders again, the toads and uh, similar to the uh, Palearctic region uh, uh, animals basically. And reptiles include the uh, uh, alligators, the pseudomos, terones, you know, you have very good examples in your textbook. Birds include, uh, what do you call it, uh, 49 species, hawks, vultures, stoks, flamingos, all of these are from the uh, uh, Neoctic region. Mammals include the deer, the bears, the bison, and uh, you have the goats, the mountain goats, sheep, porcupine, you name it, you have a lot of them, in fact. So all of the fauna present is very rich in this particular area. When it comes to the neotropical region, this includes the South America, Central America, and extensive rainforests and some of the savannas are included. And again, distinctive at the same time, very varied in nature. Around 155 terrestrial vertebrate families are there. And this is again subdivided into Chilean, Brazilian, Mexican and Antillean. And these are the different kinds of amphibians that are present, reptiles, birds and mammals. So the mammals include the possum, you have the spider monkeys, you have wolves, jaguars, puma, bear, you name them, they're there basically. And when it comes to the birds, and uh, uh, you have the toucan, which is very common over here. And they're tropical birds. Then you have the coils, the parrots, in fact. And then you have uh, uh, the legless lizards, the horned toads. All of these come under the, uh, what do you call it, uh, reptiles. And the uh, uh, amphibians include different kinds of salamanders.
you have the agouti and the sloth also which are endemic to this particular region neotropical birds are very extensive and many of them are present exclusively in the south american continent so this is one thing and when it comes to the ethiopian region or uh, then you have it it's mostly the sahara the madagascar and the south arabian uh, area over here again you have uh, very hot regions around 161 families are present east african sub region west african south african and the malagasy sub region are the uh, like subdivisions of this particular area and so you have different kinds of uh, animals pertaining to the ethiopian region or the saharan region these include the hippopotamus the gorilla the baboon and the monkey in fact uh, so this is one thing and then you have the african elephant the ostriches giraffes black bears different kinds of snakes, pythons, and different kinds of poisonous snakes, the African king cobra for that matter. So all these come under the uh, Af Ethiopian or the African region. When it comes to the Oriental region, this includes areas or uh, like, you know, um, uh, regions of Himalayas, that is like, you know, India, south of Himalayas, Burma, Thailand, Malaysia, South China, all of these areas. Again, varied features. So you have Indian, Indochina, Ceylonese, and Indo-Malian subregions. Again, endemic to these regions, you have different kinds of uh, uh, so uh, like you know flora and fauna. So at a point of time, it was called as the Gondwana land, wherein India and African subcontinents were together present unitedly. Then the continental drift took place because of which there was division in all of these uh, regions. So Indian and Asian continents were separate and the rest is uh, uh, like, you know, as it is. So this is uh, because of the continental drift that took place earlier. So what are the characteristic vertebrae fauna present over here? So you have different kinds of fishes like scoliodon. Then you have the lantern fish, seahorses. Uh, most of them uh, are present in the Indian subcontinent, especially the freshwater fishes. And... Uh, uh, that is, uh, and they also include uh, countries like Sri Lanka, Sumatra, and Borneo, wherein Borneo, wherein you have freshwater fishes, and then you know uh, Bali and uh, uh, other areas have puntis and rospora, which are cyprinid fishes. So you do not have any kind of primitive freshwater fishes in the Oriental region. Amphibians include the Sicilians, and then you have uh, snake-like Sicilian salamanders. Then you have megafris. Then Java, Borneo do not have any kind of Sicilians present. Reptiles include, uh, the reptiles include the wall lizards, different kinds of lizards, cabellians. You have the flying lizards, you have Euromastics. And then you have different kinds of snakes such as the king cobra indigenous to the uh, rainy areas of uh, eastern India, that is your uh, Meghalaya and that uh, areas in fact. Then uh, Russell's viper, pit vipers. And the birds include sparrows, crows, miners, woodpeckers. All of these are indigenous. And our, we all know that, you know, our national bird of India is the peacock, which is present. We have the one-horned rhino, which is present in uh, uh, the Kaziranga forest in Assam. And then you have a shield-tailed viper. Then you have the different kinds of uh, shoes and the Indian elephant, not to forget it. When it comes to the Australian region, this includes regions of Australia, New Guinea, Tasmania, Molucas, and other uh, Filipino uh, islands, in fact. So, the and uh, New Guinea is a place where it is covered mostly with rainforest. Tasmania has uh, got a cooler temperature. So, you have a unique flora and fauna going over there. And you have more likely or more specifically the marsupials present in that area. It is again divided into Australian, Australian, Polynesian, and New Zealand regions. So, and these are the different kinds of marsupials, wombats, spiny anteaters, then you have the um, uh, moles, kangaroos, wall wallabies, all of these belong to the uh, Australia uh, and Australian uh, ream, in fact. And you also have different kinds of birds such as cassowary, which is, uh, and the emu, they are both flightless birds. You have the cockatoo, the duck-billed platypus, which is a mammal, and uh, you have the honeysuckers. So this is how it is. And again, when it comes to the different kinds of distribution in animal, we have something called as distribution of uh, the different kinds of animals. So in this, we are going to see about the Wallace's line and discontinuous distribution or pattern. So again, this is basically divided into geographical distribution and bathymetric. And 
again based on the time so we have the cosmopolitan discontinuous and the bipolar distribution again this is all based on the different kinds of regions and how the continental drift took place in the first place and at the same time you know how uh, the basic animals have come to different areas altogether again there were certain barriers for the dispersal to take place so these barriers are the ones wherein dispersal was made difficult because of the presence of such factors so they are physical barriers climatic barriers and the biological barriers so physical barriers include topography that is you know your uh, the region how it is present and whether if at all there is any kind of large water body present in the first place and then uh, the vegetation if it is present food makes a, a barrier in the first place and then climate where whether you know that particular uh, creature is able to sustain or withstand temp differences in the temperature moisture and the amount of light uh, from the place a to b and biological barriers is so, uh, habit and habitat of the animal makes a difference over here home range or territoriality also makes a difference and how did dispersal take place with natural rafts or driftwoods the animals could go to different places crossing the sea or the water with the help of wind for that matter and storms the because of which huge storms huge winds uh, carried away uh, animals to different uh, places altogether and where finally those which could survive established to their own species species or subspecies land bridges and transportation by manual method is by transportation of animals after they were domesticated or by huge different kinds of human agencies this is about our uh, distribution but i just want to uh, say uh, say a little bit about our uh, what do you call it um, please give me a moment uh, ar wallace's uh, distribution in fact so i'll just tell you about it so when it comes to the biogeographical -geogra evidences and uh, uh, the different kinds of valley line and the dist continuous distribution you have biogeography over here distribution of animals of uh, on the uh, uh, earth in fact and earlier it was just a single land mass called as the pangaea and then because of different kinds of changes and continental drift masses broke up and drifted apart from one another so this turned out to be uh, like you know um, the oceans deserts and mountains which possessed different kinds of climatic conditions so these barriers prevented free movement of the organisms so adaptability also took place so this is how continental uh, drift took place about 250 years ago all of it was joined together known as the pangaea and then slowly there was uh, like you know it this uh, there was this uh, joint continents of uh, pangaea where you had two large continents which are known as the laurasia and the gondwana line and 65 million years ago you had all the continents separating and today you have uh, this continental drift wherein north america and the europe are still moving apart at the rate of around 2 cm per year so this thing is like the uh, the drift is still continuing so again this all this can be uh, like you know explained with the help of the evidences so we have biogeographical reams today or the continental distribution then we have the discontinuous distribution of the closely related species restricted distribution and you have the adaptive radiation and the uh, adaptive convergence so this is again we have just seen the different kinds of major bio, biogeographic regions or the rims as they were called as which are the palearctic oriental australian ethiopian neoarctic and neotropical so we have seen the different kinds of uh, areas which is uh, under the rims and the different kinds of animals that are present in different rims so for india which comes under the oriental rim these are the important animals that are present the king cobra the crocodile the gavialis the indian national bird the peacock the elephants the tigers and the lions australia includes all the marsupials that are present then you have the opossum the duckbill platypus which is a mammal and then you have the spiny anteaters and the flightless birds the kangaroos the emus and the uh, ostriches and the cassowary 
again, Ethiopian ream includes different kinds of poisonous snakes, ostriches, and different kinds of animals related to it. And the Nearctic regions include the alligators, the hawks, and the opossums. So this is one thing. And these are the different geographical reams that are present in the world. And then when it comes to India, which comes in the Oriental Rim, it was separated from the Palearctic Rim by the Himalayan Mountains and from the Ethiopian and the Australian Rim by the sea. And this is separated by something called as the Wallace's Line. Let us just see what exactly is Wallace's Line. Before that, we will see about discontinuous distribution of closely related uh, uh, like, you know, uh, species. So you have instances where you have the species which were closely related finally separated because of a geographical barrier developing. This is known as discontinuous distribution. Most common examples are the alligators present in the US and in the Eastern China, even in India, in fact. So they were connected with East Asian during the Cenozoic era. So they were distributed all over, but because of different kinds of geographical barriers, they got separated, but they're all related sea species. And then the lungfishes also. So now we have the South African lungfishes, we have the African lungfishes, then we have the Australian lungfishes also. So they're all present in different countries and different continents altogether, one in South America, one in Africa, and one in Australia. So this is how it got distributed. So, and this is the present distribution of the uh, lungfishes, that is, Lepidospirin is found in the South African region, South American region, Protopterus in the African, and Neoceratodus is found in the uh, Australian region. So, this is how it was. And same, similar with the camels and the elephants also. So the African and the Indian elephant got separated because uh, uh, earlier it was all one Gondwana land. Tapirs are found in America as well as the Malaysian or the Malayan islands. Now plants that are present in eastern USA and China are similar. So this is all ex examples of discontinuous distribution. When it comes to restricted distribution, for example, they are unique or endogenous only to some areas in the whole world. For example, are monotremes. Monotremes are the egg-laying mammals, that is the uh, duck-billed platypus. They are found only on the Australian land. Marsupials or the pouched mammals are confined only to Australia, New Zealand and South America. These include the kangaroo, the wallaby and uh, the other uh, marsupials. The and then they are all, they survived as placental mammals. And because they could not go through the land route, they are endemic or they are present only in Australia and those areas. Different kinds of cacti are present only in America. The double coconut is present only in the Seychelles. Now, when it comes to adaptive radiation or the divergent evolution, this is something like homologous, uh, uh, like, you know, what do you call it? Uh, function is there, homologous organs are present. Wherein if you see the Darwin finches, so similar to the mainland, but you have the different kinds of finches, 13 species, that is ground finches, cactus ground finches, all of these. And then you have the Australian uh, marsupials, wherein, you know, the process of adaptive radiation was seen as uh, uh, found in the finches in the Galapagos Islands. And locomotion of mammals, if you see the flying uh, phalanger or the Tasmanian wolf, they all have a uh, marsupial radiation over here. And then when it comes to adaptive radiation, see, the same limbs are being adapted. For example, in a man, we use them for running or walking the hind limbs. Over here for leaping, over here for gliding, the forearms are used, all this. So the same, whatever is present, is used for different purposes. When it comes to the convergent evolution, that means the unrelated animals that are present use or like you know perform the same function over here same uh, uh like you know um uh, organs perform different functions over here same organs are not present but different organs for example wings of insects and bats and birds show conversion uh, convergent evolution mammals have uh, different kinds of uh, like you know convergent evolution so these are the uh like you know what do you call it examples for convergent evolution as you can just see. 
mole and marsupial mole burrowing ant eaters numbat is again you know they both are ant feeders you have the marsupial mouses lemurs wolves all of this and then you have different kinds of aquatic vertebrates and then uh, uh, the ant eaters are not closely related but they have uh, like you know they perform the same function we also have a parallel evolution wherein for example the deer and the horse they have two toads two toad because they are like you know they usually are uh, running or uh, arboreal uh, not arboreal sorry but they are like you know they are land animals and they run so they have uh, like you know their bones have been developed into uh, such or adapted into such a way that they are uh, it is convenient for them so tasmanian wolf is also a marsupial while wolf is a placental mammal so this is a pouched mammal in fact whereas a normal wolf is a placental mammal so there is a parallel evolution over here so this is about uh, the evolution and the evidences that are present when it comes to ar russell wallace he was the father of evolution as we uh, like you know no so his childhood was given over here he was born in wales that is in um, uh the uh, the uk and then you had uh, like you know he was like more into map making geometry and trigonometry and then he tried to see this is basic uh, what do you call it uh, explanation about him so i'm not going to go into details but what he had discovered was that he was the founder of biogeography he had in recognized the di uh, different biogeographical regions on the earth so you have a wallace line which is an imaginary line present uh, going from or separating the asia and the australian regions so this is again based on the natural selection over here and then you know there was this kind of uh, discrepancies or differences between darwin father of evolution and uh, wallace so darwin said natural selection wallace said survival of the fittest and adaptation so you had different kinds of uh, theories over here regarding wallace and uh, then he had different kinds of publications also and you know he had given the different kinds of geographical distribution of animals in fact so when it comes to the wallace's line like i told you he had told that the, there was like you know discovery for the uh, with the fact that um, australia and uh, asia were separated and at the same time because of this he had formulated ideas on the evolution by natural selection observing or collecting the wildlife present in islands in the southeast asia so he had uh, and especially fauna in bali and lombok so this was the uh like you know the, this is where he had proposed the, uh like you know what do you call it wallace's line so this line runs through indonesia borneo sulawesi through the lombok strait between bali and lombok and it's about it's quite small it's around only 35 kilometers but there is a distributional uh like you know differences so this biogeography distribution of animals was given by a alfred wallace and he had written the book known as the geographical distribution of animals in the year 1876 now uh, this is uh, again distribution like we, i had already told you is continuous discontinuous and bipolar type so bipolar is both in both polar regions that is both the poles the north and the po uh, south poles you have different kinds of animals that are present which include uh, the polar bears the arctic foxes and then you have the uh, antarctic region also wherein you have the penguins so this causes are again because they fail to migrate to different areas and then once they were widely distributed and then uh, they are not surviving right now because they are present in different kinds of distant uh, pockets so climate is also a fact for discontinuity in the distribution of species so this is all about your uh, ar wallace's uh, theory of discontinuous distribution and uh, let us now see about the continental distribution let me share my screen again with you and take out the relevant uh, presentation please give me a moment Ma'am, once you tell the page number. Page number is one forty-seven. Thank you, ma'am.
Yeah, please give me a moment. I'm just trying to uh, like, you know, take down that particular uh, slide. Right, I think I have it. Right. So when it comes to a continental drift, we have something called as the Wagner's Continental Drift Theory. So this is all in paleogeography. Uh, so paleogeography is the study of the historical geography of the Earth. So this includes mapping and then what is the position of the continents that was there earlier. And then how has it changed the distribution of the lands and, the, and how, it, how, how has it been distributed? Uh, not this. Please give me a moment. What happened to it? Right. So earlier, there was this particular, uh, so it is a study of the historical geography. And uh, this is again, like you can see, it's again uh, based on five data types. So what, what, where are the magnetic lines present? What are linear magnetic anomalies, paleobiogeography, paleoclimatology, geology, and tectonic theory. So Alfred Wegener was pro had proposed the continental drift theory. So he had done a lot of uh, study of the maps and then he had proposed the theory of continental drift and theory of plate tectonics. So you're like, you know, seeing or observing the different places, he had come to this uh, conclusion that either the climate has changed or the position of the places have been altered. So continental drift, uh, according to that, the, all the continents were joined together first and then they drifted apart. So he had named the supercontinent, like I told you in the earlier slide, Pangaea. And then all of them were like puzzles. Then slowly, it was this is how it was earlier. Then it became Laurasia and Gondwana land. Now, after the continental drift began and the climatic changes and, you know, you have the glacial uh, movement. Uh, this is how our present Earth looks like. So he was uh, primarily a meteorologic uh, meteorologist, and he uh, proposed this uh, theory of continental drift. And then he had also written a book called Die Eschtung der der Continente and Oceane, uh, and uh, it's a it's a book in German, and it was translated later. So this is according to the matching coastlines of continents across the uh, water bodies, age of the rocks then fossil evidences and the climatic evidences and the different kinds of uh, deposits of different kinds of minerals. So this is one thing. And now what are the evidences of continental drift? So you can see that, you know, shelves of the Africa and South America, when you try to imagine them getting closer, they fit perfectly with each other because they're like puzzle pieces. And you have the same age rocks present in both Southeast Brazil and South Africa. So, and then you have the Eastern USA and the Northwest Europe showing similar positions and places if you join together like puzzle pieces. So, similarly, you have different kinds of glacial deposits present in Antarctica and uh, India, which are actually very far away from each other. When it comes to evidences from climate, you see that 
Coal deposits which are of similar age are present in Antarctica, North America and UK. Again, glacial striations are present in different areas which are far away from each other. All of this suggests that if, uh, like, you know, they were once together and had a very similar climate, but right now they are very far away. So this is about the climatic evidences and you can see the glacial scratches in the South Africa also. And then when it comes to the fossil evidences, you get to see that fossils of Mesosaurus, Lystrosaurus were found in different regions in the world. So this is one thing. And when it comes to the problem that he had faced, he could not convince anyone for that matter that all the continents were on the move. Even today, Europe and USA, uh, that is your uh, uh, Europe and the North America are moving at two centimeters apart from each other. So this is one thing. But now we know that there is continental drift that is taking place even today. Then we have something called as the continental drift based on the plate tectonics. So modern version given by Tozo Wilson. Over here, he had uh, told that, you know, the earth, the earth is made up of different kinds of, you can just see this particular diagram in your textbook, if I'm not wrong. They have mentioned the earth with different kinds of uh, earth layers. In fact, the innermost is the, uh, like, you no, know, the outermost is the litho lithosphere made up of crust mantle, like, you know, you, earth is made up of crust mantle and core. So mantle is quite, uh, like, you know, over is around 2,900 kilometers. Then you have the inner core and the outer core. Outer core region is around, uh, it is um, in fact a liquid and the inner core is uh, made up of solid. So this is how the earth is uh, like made up of. And you have the lithosphere, outer 100 kilometers of earth's crust. Then you have the asthenosphere and then you have the uh, mantle and the core. So volcanic activity, all of these, the, uh, the earth's, uh, what do you call it, crust is actually made uh, in the form of tectonic plates because of which they keep moving uh, against each other which actually causes earthquakes, volcanic activity, different kinds of mountains keep coming in or ocean trenches form because of the plate boundaries and the plate activity or movement. So tectonic plates are able to move because the earth's lithosphere has a very good mechanical strength. So this is how it is. So divergence of plates, you have formation of trenches. Convergence, you have mountain formation or transform for faults uh, that are there. So these are the different kinds of type boundaries. Convergent boundaries, so what will happen is when two tectonic plates uh, collide because of the presence of friction and uh, plate material melting, you have earthquakes, volcanoes happening. So and uh, these are the Himalayas that were formed because of such kind of tectonic activity and uh, Eurasian uh, plate and the Indian plate collision formed the Himalayas and you have the Alps formed because of different kinds of collision between Australian and Pacific. So this is all about the collision and formation. And what will happen when you have divergent boundaries is wherein the two plates slide apart. So because of which they're moving away from each other, because of which you have a boundary or a rift valley that is being formed between, for example, Eurasian and North American continental tectonic plates. So, and then you have a transform boundary wherein plates are moving sideways. So this is formed in the uh, ocean floor. So this connects the, uh, like, you know, so you have a fault line forming over here. So you, this is uh, the example of the California San Andreas fault, which is a transformed boundary. So over here, the plates have moved sideways from each other that, rather than away from each other. So this is the San Andreas fault line like you can see over here. So it's a fault line or a rift that has formed. So this is about the earth uh, and the tectonic plate theory in fact that was given. So because of all this, we get to see that when I have to conclude this particular lesson, Wegener had suggested that because of the rotation of the earth also, continents started to shift towards and apart from each other. So this is one thing that he had suggested. But when it comes to the plate tectonic theory, because of the friction and the plates are always moving and uh, away and uh, towards each other. So because of this, this moving and interacting is known as plate tectonics. So uh, the innermost part of the earth, you can just see that particular diagram in your uh, textbook figure 9.8 in fact. So you have the innermost part of the earth, which is the crust. 
uh, sorry, which is the core, which is inner core, and then outer part is known as the outer core or the liquid. Then you have the mantle, and then you have the crust. Over here, you have different kinds of periods which actually have shown that there was Pangaea or else the supercontinent wherein all the landmass on the earth was connected. Before that, let me just talk about the innermost path again. It is known as the barosphere. And then you have the diameter, which is the pyrosphere or the mantle. And then the earth's thin crust, which is known as the lithosphere. So during the Carboniferous period, it was a supercontinent or the Pangaea that was present. Permian period, you had uh, uh, two uh, uh, huge continents, which is the Laurasia and the Gondwana land. And it was separated by a sea of Thetis. And then uh, during the Miocene period, the Indian plate had collided with the Eurasian plate. So the sea of Thetis, whatever was there, had completely been obliterated, meaning it is it has completely vanished. So this is how geographical uh, or the continental drift theory shows us how the earth has come to its present uh, position because of the plate tectonics that are present, which divides or has joined the lands together. So continental drift theory, to, just to conclude, uh, describes one of the earliest ways where the geologists thought that continents moved over the time. So today we know that continental drift has been replaced by plate tectonic theory, wherein we have evidences that it was because of the shifting of the Earth's crust the so many uh, like you know what do you call it uh, the existence of uh, either the mountains or the volcanic region so we have the ring of fire in the uh, what do you call it uh, near the um, uh, near the pacific ocean basin which uh, is you know having a lot of active volcanoes and that place is known as the ring of fire and you have Mount St. Helena and other uh, kind of active volcanoes also that are present. This is all because of uh, the plates moving uh, relative to one another above the hotter, uh, uh, like, you know, uh, the, uh, the mantle, in fact. So most of the world's active volcanoes are located between shifting plates. They are also known as the plate boundary volcanoes. So this is all about the continental drift and the plate tectonic theory and the fossil patterns that are present and the lithosphere plates of the earth. And this is about the San Andreas fault, uh, just to summarize. So we know that today it is the plate tectonics that has uh, uh, like you know, uh, helped in uh, giving ev evidence about the different kinds of continents that are present today. So thank you so much. And I'm going to stop. Tomorrow, I will be dealing with the developmental biology, which is the types of eggs, fertilization, development of grass relation, organogenesis, fetal membranes, chick, placentation, and animals. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am.